guys, it's Rachel Youngson here from usedplr.com and wholefoodplr.com. We are here with our weekly PLR Power Hour. This is our chance to ask questions, connect as a group, talk about exciting things we're doing in our businesses, and some folks choose to hop on here just to carve an hour out of their week so that they can put their PLR to use, and that's perfectly fine too. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a great topic, I think. Uh, it's called, I have PLR, now what? And the reason I chose this topic um, is because, well, for starters, it's something that uh, folks really need to, well, it's something that is the, like, the primary question that I get asked when folks get their PLR, um, is, what is PLR? How do I use it? How do I, you know, can I really make money off of it? You know, what happens next? all that kind of stuff. And so obviously that was a good portion of why we chose this, this topic. But the other thing is we have our used PLR members bundle coming up in a couple of weeks. And when that happens, a lot of folks in the group and outside of the group are going to be getting access to a lot of PLR products and PLR training and, and uh, personal use products. And they're going to um, very likely get overwhelmed with all of this. And so it's very important that they have like steps, you know, and I'm trying to eliminate that overwhelm feeling by breaking everything down, having it all um, in like in nice little chunks so that you know, this is what I need to do. This is what I'm doing next. And this is, this is what I do after that. Um, we, I am going to do a quick check over in our Facebook group real quick before I start. Um, Before I start the fun chat, uh, the reason is just because I barely um, got everything up before before we started today, and so sometimes when I when people try to slide in after like one o'clock, then they'll get blocked and they'll put they'll let us know in the Facebook group. But everything looks good. Okay, so I will go ahead and we will share the screen today. Hey, Fran, good to see you today, my friend. Um, so we're going to do a little screen share. And uh, before I forget, just because this has come up in the uh, with another member, I wanted to let you guys know, um, if you ever get to the point in your businesses where you think that you're ready to uh, host webinars on your own or, or have meetings like this, you know, and maybe it's a little out of your comfort zone or maybe it's something that you're not familiar with or maybe it's... Um, very intimidating just let me know because you know if it's not scheduled um, during one of our other meetings I will gladly come and sit in or even sit in and chat with you with your audience present or we could even use my zoom room if you needed to um, because you're part of my community and you're part of my group and I really want to see you be able to succeed however however that looks for you so um, if, if that ever happens just know that you know I'm here and we can tackle it together and you know I can I can help you get set up with all that good stuff okay so I have PLR now what fun little topic very important topic um, as I mentioned we do have our, our bundle coming up in just a couple of weeks so it's a very good timing for a topic like this and I also um, before I forget, next week we have uh, Charlene Burke is going to be talking to us about turning your PLR into videos. She showed us this um, about three or four months ago with a tool that she uses, uh, Content Samurai, I believe, I believe is what it's called. And she showed us this, but since that time, some things have changed over there and they've, uh, they've changed the scope of what they're able to do and, and a lot of things are different now. So because of that, we are going to revisit that tool and see what, um, see what's what, see what's changed, see what, uh, <clears throat> see if you can still fit that into your business model or, you know, if sometimes Charlene has discounts for that kind of stuff too, which is great. So um, Greg says, this is perfect timing, thinking of doing webinars soon and need to learn about them. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can always do, um, we can always do a power hour, you know, where I show you like basically what I do with our Zoom meetings. 
um, we could do when you're ready to do it yourself, let me know and I, I'll definitely sit in and help you get some audience participation from that or I can sit in and I can ask questions or you know whatever whatever needs to happen we can make it happen um, <clears throat> in fact I can I can go over those steps real quick before we before we end up in today if you want as well um, so the first thing that you want to do when you get your PLR okay um, is know your rights and I say this a lot and for some of you this is gonna some of these steps are gonna be like oh I know rates you say it all the time but I say it all the time for a reason <laughs> And the reason is because it's super important and a lot of people miss it. Um, so if if I say something and you feel like you've heard it a million times before, then I feel like I'm doing my job in in helping you to, to know exactly what you need to do to make the most out of your PLR, right? Um, so anyway, the first thing you always want to do is know your rights. And your PLR rights should be sitting in a file inside of your PLR folder. So hello, Miss Jen. Hey, Jen. Um, is uh, Caitlin going to want to chat a little bit today? Can you can you throw me a private message in the chat just so that I can make space for her if she does? All right. So <clears throat> for me, I have everything broken down. Um, you know that I, I use OneDrive to keep all my stuff um, organized, and so also um, if something happens and this computer goes down, then I can access OneDrive anywhere else, which is really important to me um, because. I don't want to lose everything and I will lose everything because I lose things all the time. Um, just in my regular life. Like I swear, like I lose my keys five times a day. Seriously. I don't even know how. Okay. So, um, let's see. I have a releases folder. Let's do whole food PLR and you can always make notes of the way that I have things organized in, if you uh, don't have an organization strategy of your own. Um, I don't mind that at all. Paid releases and past releases. Okay, so let's say you picked up our Paleo 30 Day Challenge. All right, this is our zip file. You go into the zip file. Scratch that. I'll go into this one because it's already open. And then there you have your rights and next steps. Okay, so these are the rights. This is going to tell you exactly what you can and can't do with this PLR. Sometimes people will say um, you can put it on membership sites. You can't give it away. Sometimes they'll say you can only sell it for X amount plus. Um, I haven't seen that in a, in a good few years, but people do do that. And it's happened before, so it may happen again. So you just want to keep your eye out on these rights. And if you have any questions, talk to the PLR provider. If you don't know how to contact them, uh, let me know and we can figure out like if it's somebody that I know I can get in contact with with them for you um, or if you try to contact them and they are unavailable for you then you don't want to work with them any decent PLR provider is going to tell you hey this is who I am this is how you contact me if you have any questions if you have any problems we're going to resolve them that's how you know that they're decent providers if they if they're not willing to do any of that stuff for you if they like Get your, get your purchase and then ghost you, which some scammy people do, not anybody that I associate with, thank God, but you know, and you don't want to work with them. Um, which for those of you who are first time listeners, that's also why I always recommend getting a free PLR pack from someone before turning over money to them, because then you kind of get a sense of their writing style, the quality of content, and it also gives you the ability to know, can I easily contact this person? Will they respond to me if I do? You know, and you can make good decisions from there, good business decisions from there. Um, all right, so know your rights. And remember, the rights can vary from person to person, so it's very important that you always take time to sit down and do that before you make your plan, before you figure out how you're going to reformat it or anything else. Because the last thing you want to do is get involved with a piece of PLR and then be like, oh my gosh, I don't know, I can't use this now. What do I do? What do I do? You know, I bought this for no reason. I, I'm not allowed to, I don't know, put it on my membership site. <clears throat> so after you know your rights, then it's time to make your plan. This is where you're going to figure out, okay, this is the PLR that I have. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to prosper from it? How am I going to break it down? How am I going to reformat it? What's going to happen next? Okay. We have, and I think we can put it in the chat box, 
but we actually have a little journal that we give out uh, over at Whole Food PLR, and it is a, let me find it, um, PLR journal. It's our PLR success steps journal, and what it's going to do is it helps you to break everything down. You can print it out, write on it. You can print it out every time you get a new piece of PLR, however you want to do it. But it's going to help you to break everything down. And once you start to break everything down, then you kind of can visualize that plan that you want for your PLR, which is a big deal. Um, no worries, Jen. We can, uh, we can uh, shoot for next week or the week after even. Uh, Charlene's going to be speaking with us next week, so I'm sure we'll have some time um, before or after that as well. Uh, Fran says, I always look for a person's name instead of just the company name. Yes. Good job, Fran. Yeah, it's very important. Like sometimes people will just, um, sorry, this is what happens when Rachel multitasks, everybody. Um, sometimes people will just throw their their logo out there or their, their uh, company name and you don't really know who they are as people, you know, and I personally, that's not a business practice that I like because I feel like anyone who is reputable and open is someone that you're going to be able to say, oh, okay, well, I know Sharon Sheldon, she runs, she runs uh, Content Sparks. I know Ruth Pound White. I know, I know where, who, I know she runs content shortcuts, you know, I know April, she's from niche, start, niche starter packs. You know what I mean? Like, because you, like you have those names, you can then find them on Facebook, find them on social media. You can, you know, easily see what other people have to say about them. It's much different than these people who just throw their business names out there. I'm with you hundred percent friend. I never, I would never advise just uh, dealing with, um, Dealing with somebody who just gives you their business name, especially if you can't contact them at all. I hate that. Um, all right, so I dropped the uh, success steps journal into the chat box for those of you who are on the call. If you're not on the call, I will try to get that in the resources section for you. Um, let's see if I can open this. So this is, those of you who've uh, done these calls before, you guys know what all this is but this is basically going to show you like this is where I'm keeping my pack this is what my pack contains this is the name um, this is what I want my readers to know or do or feel um, when they get this pack you can have all sorts of steps for them you know I either it's a free lead magnet or it's it's a, an upsell to something that you already have or it's going to be broken down into emails you want them to be opening the emails anything like that and then you're going to go ahead and put that there um, and then it's just going to walk you through all the different steps that you can take. So, hey, Miss Brenda, it's good to see you today, sweetheart. Um, so then it's going to just walk you through all the steps you can take. Um, <clears throat> so that is a huge part of what you're going to want to do, formulating that plan, figuring out this is, this is what I want to do with this PLR. This is like a finding an overview basically of this is what the PLR contains. This is what I want to do with it. This is the message that I'm trying to get sent out to the world, you know, and from there, then we move on to the next step, which is where things start to get fun. Um, Brenda, just so you know, there's a free gift in the uh, chat box for you guys. Uh, it's the PLR success steps journal, and that will help you when you get any PLR pack to list everything and, and start making your plan for your PLR. Thank you very much, Fran. Fran says this is very helpful. Um, Greg says, thanks for the download. No problem, everyone. I'm really happy to do that for you. Um, <clears throat> so know your rights, make your plan, use that success steps journal to help you do that. Um, then I always suggest, and those who are, this is another area where those who've been on these calls are like, oh my gosh, just doing this again. But <laughs> I always suggest you change the title and you change the cover image. Is it like I absolutely have to? It isn't. However, if I'm in a group like our Use PLR members group, okay, and let's say Brenda's in the health niche and I'm in the health niche, 
and we're going to be doing some JV stuff together. You know, maybe she's an affiliate for me and I'm an affiliate for her. All that's really great. But if we're both using PLR to help us create our content, that's not shady. That's not scammy. That's not slimy. That's, you know, um, because we are using it to the best of our abilities and we're each doing our due diligence to make it unique. But one of the things, the easiest ways to make sure that you get that uniqueness is to take a little bit of time in the beginning, change the title, change the cover. Because that way, even if, <clears throat> let's say, Brenda buys um, or she's promoting something of mine as an affiliate and then she goes to April Lamar's website and she sees uh, a PLR pack, maybe the same PLR pack that I derived my, my product from, she, she wouldn't know. And it's not even that I would be doing anything shifty or slimy, but still, I mean, it's, it's all about making it very unique to you, making it look like yours, and that's an easy way to do it. If you have any questions on finding royalty-free images or creating e-covers or any of that good stuff, we have a free guide over at usepeeler.com. Use PLR to, or I'm sorry, it's PLR to social media images. Um, okay. So you're also going to change the appearance as far as on the inside, if you have brand colors, if there's, uh, you want to add any kind of content, any kind of stories, your own pictures, um, maybe you have a graph or maybe you want to put in like a, a chart so that they can document whatever it is that you're telling them to do, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> you always want to take some time to do that. And that also includes your About Us page, uh, your disclaimer, your table of contents, and at the very end, your next steps slash resources. So some people just do a resource page at the end. I, uh, I typically choose to do a next steps page at the very end of my reports and then a resources page as well. And that way, that way it kind of says, okay, well, now you can, the next steps is basically, okay, now you can find me on this social media. This is my email. This is how you can contact me. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what I want you to do next as far as to continue learning. And then the resources page is basically all the resources that were mentioned in the report. So you want to make sure that you take the time to do all that good stuff. Then it's time to think about whether or not you want to increase the value by reformatting it. So I talk about this a lot because it's super important, but reformatting is, reformatting is a very easy and simple way to take something and change it up, make it unique to you, and do something different. So back to the health content, okay? Brenda and I both have the same health PLR, right? So she's turning hers into checklists. I keep mine as a report. Two people can buy, literally, you can buy the exact same product based on the exact same PLR, and it's two completely separate products. Why? Because Brenda took the time to, not only did she reshape the report, but she also made checklists to go with that report. Maybe I did Maybe I did my due diligence with the report, but I didn't do anything else, right? So she's able to sell hers now at a higher cost because she has more content. And she looks, honestly, she looks like more of a rock star than I do because she bought, you know, because she took the time to, to give more material to everyone. And reformatting is so easy because it's not a headache. It's so easy because you're not, creating something from scratch. You're just like with your PLR, you're using your PLR as a foundation. When you reformat something, you're doing the exact same thing. That PLR is still a foundation and you're just lathering it in a different way, um, throwing it out there in a different way. So you really want to figure out step five, figure out if you want to reformat this to increase the value and how you want to do that. Very important stuff. <clears throat> Once you've done everything, you have your product together. That's when you want to really think about your price. You may have, when you did your brainstorming, thought of a price point that you wanted to reach. But after, as you like navigate through things, things tend to change. So I always recommend going back again and making sure, yes, I still want to have this price, or I want this price to be the launch price, and then I want this to be the final price. Um, <clears throat> really think about that and give it like one more glance, because you may have done things 
that you didn't intend to do at the beginning. You know, you may have really gotten into this groove and, and, you know, really busted things out like, you know, like a crazy person and, and it, your, your price should race for that, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, we have a little cold that's been going around our house. It's super fun. Anyway, um, <clears throat> after you set your price, you also want to think about courting affiliates. Some, of, some in our group do affiliate marketing, some don't. And that's, that's fine. You know, it's really where your comfort level is at and where you're at in your business. Um, having affiliates in your niche is a really great way to bring new people into your audience because um, you and I have the same, same group of people, but if I'm your affiliate, I might have, I, I can have this whole section of people that you don't even know exist and they don't know you exist. And then I can bring you guys together for, you know, for a commission of my own. And so that's why affiliate marketing is so powerful. It's such an important part of your marketing strategy if you choose to go that route. Some people just don't feel comfortable with it, and that's okay. It's up to you. Um, but if you do choose to court affiliates, I recommend three weeks before you launch your product. Because what will happen is some people will want to create bonuses. Um, <clears throat> depending on your niche, some people have – affiliate offerings every day that they have to weed through and decide what's best for their for their community and that kind of thing. And you really want to get in like as soon as possible. You want to get on that radar. You want to get in that um, schedule of theirs and you want them to have enough time to create a bonus if they choose to do that. <clears throat> so after you do all this fun stuff, before your product actually goes live, I really recommend having some kind of a back-end email sequence. The really great thing about PLR is you can even reformat your PLR to use it as your email sequence. Yay, good stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> and then you can, you know, use some, uh, have some affiliate links back there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I usually do like five products, or I'm sorry, five emails, and I usually have two of those uh, be affiliate-inspired emails. So for instance, uh, three emails will be content, this is how you get in touch with me, here's a free gift, that kind of thing. The other two emails will be this, if you like this, you'll love this. Or have you seen this person's case study? And the two affiliate emails, they won't be back to back. They'll be spaced out because I want the customer to see that the main goal here is education and not profit. And then um, they'll just be short and sweet and they'll have something to do with, with the overall, uh, product and the, the tone of the whole back end. Then after you do all that fun stuff, it's time to publish and prosper. Uh, you guys know if you don't have a website or if you don't have a shopping cart, you can always use JVZoo or Warrior Plus. A lot of people are liking Warrior Plus right now because JVZoo had some kind of a big, uh, security breach, I believe last year. Um, but either way, it's really dependent on you, your niche, your community, and your affiliates. And what's like, what, what's the best fit for all of that stuff. And then once you do all these steps, all you have to do is find a similar product and go through everything again. So like, let's say my first PLR product is on pregnancy, then I can look for a PLR product on nursing and go through all these steps again. And now... Not only do I have two separate products, but I have two products that work really well together. So if I pull somebody into the pregnancy funnel and then they go through all that stuff, then it, how much of an easy sell would it be to then be like, okay, now here's the nursing side of that. You know, that they go hand in hand. They're, you know, you have to do one right after you do the other. You don't have to, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's very important after you do all your steps, your next PLR pack, think about what relates to what you just did, because that will serve you um, in a lot of different ways in a lot in a much bigger scale. So that's my that's my spiel for today. Um, Jen says I wouldn't be where I am without my affiliates, and yes, I agree with Jen. That is very true. Um, you know, there's been many times that I haven't been I haven't uh, been great at creating my own products and. The affiliate marketing has been the bulk of what I've earned in, in those months. So it's very big. Affiliate marketing is very big. And it's a really great way to get new people in, to 
get your word out there. And also when you make connections with affiliates and they know that you treat their customers right and they know that you're um, a good person to work with, then you also open all these other avenues to your business because you open potential JVs. Um, <clears throat> they're not only willing to be an affiliate for you, but uh, they may be willing to then scratch your back, so to speak. Um, for instance, like Trish Linda Mood, you know, she spoke here with us uh, last year about uh, turning your PLR into a food blog. I've been Trish's affiliate forever. If she didn't know who I was and we didn't have any kind of connection, her taking her time to share her free expertise and, you know, guidance for something like that probably wouldn't have happened, right? So very, very important stuff. All right, so that's my spiel. So let's hear your thoughts or <laughs> whatever you have for me today. Uh, if there's something you want to talk about, let's talk about it. If there's something you're doing in your business, I want to hear about it. Um, or you can also shout out your business, and we will be sure to put it in the resources page of this uh, Power Hour so that we can share it with other folks. So just as a reminder, next week we will have uh, Charlene Burke is going to be here. She's going to be talking to us about uh, the new way to navigate Content Samurai, um, who I don't believe is called Content Samurai anymore, actually. I think they changed their name, too. But either way, uh, everything's different over there right now. So she's going to show us how to do that. And that's all going back into turning your PLR into videos. So it's going to be a really great topic. me. Um, Greg says, how do you recommend filing a portion of a PLR package that has been used? Well, you, let's see if I have it up here. Um, I basically just have like a PLR to rewrite section like this. So where did all those go? Oh my gosh, that's bad. Apparently I moved it. I don't know where I put it, but I moved it. Um, but anyway, so I have this folder. It's PLR to rewrite. And then I have, wherever I moved it to, I have all my uh, PLR that's to be rewritten. And then I have a folder that's like an archive folder. So if I use something, then I throw it in that archive folder. Now, you can always use the search feature up at the uh, top of your, of your, uh, this thingamajigger, whatever this is, folder, um, to find more things that work for you or find related items or that kind of thing. Uh, where is that search bar? No, I'm a big liar. There it is. So if I wanted to find, like, let's say, let's say I used some swimming PLR and so then I threw it in my archive, but then I am creating a new PLR pack and um, I think that I can reformat that swimming PLR in a different way. So then I just type swimming in the search bar, and then I will likely find that in the archive, as well as the other swimming PLR articles that I have not used, and then I can go from there. Some people get really detailed with stuff, and they have like spreadsheets and that kind of thing. Um, it's a good idea. And in fact, our like Rock Your 2020 has a spreadsheet for you to do that kind of stuff, but for me, um, I, I just throw it in the archive folder and move on. That's just me. That's just what I do. But I do recommend, however you choose to do it, having it done in such a way that it's separate from the PLR that you haven't used yet, but also it's easy to find. Because, you know, just with reformatting, there's, there's always the chance that you're going to want to come back to that PLR and change it into something else or update it for 2020 or um, make a challenge out of it or, you know, use it in some kind of a way that you haven't used it before. That was a really good question, Greg, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, 
Oh, there's Charlene. Hi, Charlene. Uh, so Charlene says, yeah, Content Samurai changed its name and the new content music templates features are awesome. So come see us on the 11th next Tuesday because we're going to have Charlene here and she's going to do her awesome, awesome training for us. Um, <clears throat> Frances, this is my first live and I found it very helpful. Uh, number seven and number eight are where I really get stuck. Oh, thank you very much, Fran. Um, I'm very uh, thankful to have you here, and I really am honored that you said that. Uh, yeah, number seven and number eight are where a lot of people get stuck, actually. Uh, for those of you who are listening, that's the back end sequence and the publish and prospering. Um, I think the reason is because when people think about PLR, they always think about making a product, but they don't always think about like the um, the tentacles, I guess, that come with that product. You know, like, for instance, if I create a product and I throw, I throw it out there, but I don't have affiliates for it, I don't have any kind of um, back-end set up, then yes, I have this product, and yes, it might, may make me money, but how much, how much good is it going to do my user over a long course of time? They're likely going to download it, and if there's no back-end sequence to remind them to, to use it, they're not going to use it. And what's more, if if they're not using using things and they're not you know continually being engaged with me by something like a back-end email sequence then what are the chances that they're gonna trust me when I say here is a great product that's a compliment to the product that you already bought you know so thank you very much friend I appreciate that um, Charlene said I copy the PLR I want to I want to use to a working folder inside of my new product this way my original copy of the PLR is untouched I appreciate those thoughts, Charlene. Yeah, that's another great another great way to use to uh, keep everything organized. And for those who are newer to the calls, we also have a um, Jen Brockman did a Trello tutorial on organizing PLR. Or I'm sorry, I did Trello. <laughs> Jen did Google. I'm such a mess. Um, so I did a Power Hour on organizing your PLR using Trello, and Jen Brockman did organizing your PLR using Google. Drive, and you can find both of those in the in the training section of the USPLR members group. Uh, Jen says Rachel's pretty smart. Aw, Jen, you're such a softie. Thanks, Jen. Um, Charlene said Rachel. Jen did Google Keep. Yeah, she did. She did Google Keep the other week. That's she did. Um, the Google Drive was last year. It was like, I want to say, before the summer of last year. It was, it was a good bit ago. But yeah, she's, anything you guys need that's Google related, Jen Brockman is your girl. She'll say, oh, she'll, she's very modest. She'll be like, no, no, but she is. She's your girl for anything Google related. She's a very smart Google person. Um, Jen says, she did Google Drive a while back. Um, she thinks she did it while filling in for me. Yes, that's actually right. She did. She was filling in for me one week, and that's what she did. So, um, okay. So, how is everybody doing today? Is there anything that you want to talk about? Is there anything going on in your business that you want to talk about? Anything that you want feedback on? Anything that we as a group, when we come together in these power hours, can, can help you brainstorm or help you with? Well, some people use these power hours as a way to connect with potential JVs, and I think that's great um, because if you're in the same niche that someone else is in then that's a wonderful potential partnership for you and that's a great way to grow your business um, Fran says good to know I don't understand Google Drive and I never heard of Google keep oh Fran oh my friend we're gonna have fun then so um, <clears throat> Google Drive I don't understand it very well either but Jen's a real whiz at it um, Google keep is much easier than Google Drive and where do I put it? Okay, so this is Google Keep, okay? It's just keep.google.com. And of course, you'll log in with whatever. So it's a way, it's like Trello in the sense that you can make notes and you can move things and sort things and that kind of stuff. But it's also, um, it's an organized way to keep your sticky notes, essentially. So the, the way that this came about was Jen knows that I live on sticky notes. That's those uh, little 
sticky notes at the bottom of my screen here. I live off of those. I have to live off of lists. Otherwise, I'm, I'm a disaster. I really am. So the um, thing about Google Keep is that you can have it on your screen, and then you can download it into an app on your phone. So I can sit on my, in my bed, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put this in my notes for blah, blah, blah. So then I just go into the phone and then I do that. And then the next day when I come into my office and it's right, everything's updated right here. You can color code things. You can make all these beautiful lists. You can make, I think as many lists as you want. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and then you can label things. So I have two businesses. I run this business and I also have an FBA business. So that's why I have different labels for that kind of stuff. I've got my notes for the bundle. Um, I've got all these things that say, Rachel, 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 because I need to remember to do things. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then you go through, and then as you finish things, you just check it off. And then you get to figure out how to get that back. So I'll figure that out later. But yeah, that's Google Keep, and it's really nice. So, and you can set reminders. And I believe you can share the notes with other people. Yeah, I'm watching Jen because she, she gives me cues. So you can share the notes with other people. You can set reminders. And I think you can add pictures and stuff too. So yeah, so it's really cool. And it's a free tool, obviously. So uh, when you want to make a note, you just go up here to take a note. And you just say your title and what you want to do. And you've got these little options here. There's your image. You can make I don't really like the color choices. I wish there were more, but I feel like your Google, you can make more color choices, but that's just me. Um, you can add a drawing, show check boxes. That's how you make it into a list. So yeah, and then you just do like test, enter, da da. Rachel, it looks like you're using the dark theme. I am. Okay, yeah, the colors are different on the light theme versus the dark theme, but you don't have more choices that I know of. Oh, but they are different? Yeah, they're like more, the traditional like pastel colors they're pink and green and yellow and blue all of that okay see good to know thank you jen yeah, yeah i didn't know that i use the dark theme because sometimes the light thing gets on my nerves but um i didn't realize that about the color choices though so thank you i appreciate that i still i have to be honest i still kind of feel like google should be able to have like all the choices of the spectrum like like when you're in canva you know you can kind of choose whatever color you want but that's just me. I'm just being cranky, I think. Well, I, I get that, but I also think you have to consider that not everybody using this stuff is um, an advanced user. So maybe they're just trying to like limit, you know, limit too many choices becomes overwhelming for a lot of people. So maybe that's where it comes from too. Plus these are free. So, you know, you gotta consider that as well. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't know why I complain when things are free. That's thank you for pointing that out, Judd. <laughs> I'm not sure I thought of it as you complaining. I just, you know, I'm just thinking out loud. I know, I know. I'll just tease you, but yeah, I, I think I would just like a better color selection. But I get what you're saying, and I do. It's a really great tool, though, Fran. And um, Jen's much more skilled at it than I am. So feel free to tag her in the group if you want to ask her questions about this. Right, Jen? So that's okay? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Jen. Didn't mean to throw you under the bus there. Um, also, we had a discussion about mailer light, uh, myself and a few other clients, the other day. So I just wanted to let you guys know, uh, Jen Brockman and Amy Schmerk? Yeah. Is that how you say it? I don't know if that's how you say it, but... That's how I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> and Amy S. Uh, in our yeah. group, they're both uh, skilled with Mailer Light. So if you have questions about that, then feel free to tag them. They've both offered generously to share their wealth of knowledge with anyone who needs it. So um, that is a one of the things that we've had folks say with the bundle is, I don't have a list. I have a bundle, but I don't have a list. I, I might want to do this, but I don't have a list. And um, while that's understandable, you know, having a list is one of the best, fastest ways to start creating that repeat return connection with people. Because if I know you and I've bought from you and then you take that time to be like, here I am, this is what I do, let's be friends, then I'm building a trust with you that I might not have with somebody else who doesn't take that time. 
So, and if I bought from you once and I liked what you did, I'm likely to buy from you again. So having a list is super important. So uh, just, just a little food for thought going forward. And MailerLite is a great cost-effective solution for that. Um, let's see, do we have any other questions today that I can answer? Let's see, so um, just to catch everyone up. Fran says, good to know, I don't understand Google Drive. Never heard of Google Keep. I didn't know you could put sticky notes on your screen like that. Oh my gosh, yes. I drive, I, before uh, Jen showed me Google Keep, I was driving everybody crazy because then you put sticky notes like this and you just lay them all over your screen. They stay there forever. Um, unless you're like me and you accidentally delete stuff because then it's gone forever and that's a real pain in the neck. Um, Charlene says, yes, Fran, back in the 80s, the PC was touted as being the paperless office to the world. Now in 2020, the PC and the cloud makes it happen. Pretty cool apps. Yes, my friend. Um, Jen says, Drive is a storage system for digital files. Brenda says, thanks, Jen. I now use Google, Google Keep. Isn't it great, Brenda? Oh, my gosh. I love it, too. It's so funny, too, because when we have these hours, I usually start them in one direction, and then they wind up in a totally different direction. And I love learning from different people, you know. We all have so much awesome experience that we share with each other. I think it's great. Um, Charlene says, function over aesthetics is the theme for Google. Yeah. Um, Brenda says, Jen, is it possible to have more than one Google Drive? Yep, it is. I'm assuming different emails or different folders. You can unmute yourself if you want. Yeah, so I had to get, to, I was just noticing no that like I had something on my mouth. Anyway, oh. um, yeah, I'm being all pretty for the camera. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, your Google Drive, is this, well, actually all of your Google stuff, like even keep, it's associated with whichever email you sign up with. And you can create as many free Google email accounts as you want. So, like I think I have probably <laughs> five, five right now, different um, Gmail accounts. So I have five different um, Google Drive accounts because they're all associated with whichever email you sign up with. And then your Google Drive is free for X amount of storage, right? Exactly. And you can also buy larger amounts of storage. And it's like two bucks a month or something to start, you know, leveling up or something. It's pretty reasonable. Good deal. Thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. Yeah, so Brenda, I would take, I would uh, see what works best for you. I mean, you can do like folders and subfolders and all that fun stuff in Google Drive. But, you know, like Jen, she no doubt has like her business and her personal and that kind of stuff. So we'll well, figure out what works for you. I do now. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> always that way. <laughs> yeah, what I really like about using Google drive and, and I'm sure a, a lot of like online storage spaces are like this, but um, like you log into it and it's just, it's your account and then you can have um, file folders and then you can have subfolders within those folders so it's pretty easy to organize um, whatever pack you're working on you, know, you can throw everything into it and then create like a new file as you like start finishing things so you've got your download file within the overall file of it that probably just didn't make a whole lot of sense but yeah no it did you can also um, have an app for Google Drive on your phone too so you can actually like see what you're um, maybe you can't download like these huge PLR files, but you can definitely see what's going on and what's where. So it's it's really nice. Um, I, for whatever reason, working from my phone is just not something that I do. It does not work for me. See, I'm lazy, so I work from my phone however much I can. <laughs> That's just me, though. <laughs> to each well, his own. Yeah, exactly. Everybody works differently. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, Jen said, yeah, Brenda, they're all associated with your Google accounts. You can have many accounts. Uh, Charlene says, I have numerous Gmail addresses, um, which means I have numerous Google Drive accounts available to me. 
Jen says, you can also buy a larger account for the drive. You just need more storage. Brenda says, great. I'll investigate. Might circle back to you if I get stuck. Brenda, feel free to. And if you need to start a discussion in the group, please feel free to do that too. That's what we're here for. Um, Fran says, Charlene, I have a number of Gmail addresses, but didn't know I could have a number of Google Drives. Pretty cool stuff, right? Uh, Brenda says, very cool, thanks. Fran says, me either, Jen. I use my computer. I must be, I, I know that I, I'm lazy, but you, you don't use your phone very much either, Fran? I am always like on my phone. I have the base camp on my phone. I have my emails on my phone. <laughs> I'm just like, if I don't have to be in here, then I'm not in here. But you know, I'm more productive when I'm in here versus when I'm on my phone. So you'd think I would be better, but either way. Um, Charlene says, I don't work from my phone, only from my laptop or netbook. Uh, need a real keyboard. That's a good point. Um, Fran says, I only read Kindle on my phone. I love Kindle. <laughs> I, that's my biggest thing. I always carry it. Like I have this huge purse. My husband, I, I drive him crazy because you can get things lost. Like people can be lost in my purses, right? But the reason they're so big is because I have a DS to carry around, not my teens, my own. Um, I have a Kindle to carry around. I mean, priorities, right? Um, all right. So uh, we've got our, our bundle submissions in. We've got a lot of great stuff, a lot of cool contributors. Um, Huge thanks to Jen and Charlene who are on the call today for contributing their stuff to the bundles. Uh, you're gonna really like what they put together for us. And we are working on use PLR to create your passive income over at usplr.com. Our next Whole Food PLR release is gonna be Paleo Pregnancy and that should be out by the end of the month. Uh, Fran says looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Fran. I am looking forward to it too. I'm. This is my first bundle, um, so it was crazy for me. And I think it was crazy for everybody else, too, because as I was navigating things, sometimes I was like, oh, wait, I want to change gears here. Um, but the good news is, once this madness is over, we'll have a template for the rest of the madness for the years to come. Um, Charlene says, LOL, I don't carry a purse. I have a wallet, and when I travel, my laptop keeps. <laughs> yeah. I just... I don't know. I get a lot of jokes about my purse. And you know how I said I lose my keys all the time? 90% of the time, I can't find it in my purse. My husband and my son, they won't even touch my purse because they say that, like, they can't find anything in there. It's like oblivion. Um, Charlene says, I missed the deadline for the bundle. Miss Charlene, don't worry about it. Just uh, our submission forms are still open. Shoot me an email if you need a link. Um, yeah, we're we're still accepting submissions um, on a, uh, I would say really on an invitation slash case by case basis at this point, because there's this whole, you know, not wanting to overwhelm what we have to do on the back end, but also, you know, we have to weigh that against the, the content. And especially with what you've got that you're sharing, um, Val and I were actually talking about it the other day, how amazing it is and how very few people, if anyone that we know of, have done it before. So um, please feel free to go ahead and, and submit whenever you have it ready, and we will be more than happy to get it in there. Um, I would say for our sanity's sake, if it could be um, by Thursday, you know, and if it needs to be later, then just email me. We'll have a conversation. Not a big deal. Um, Jen says, I use a Kara binder for my keys and hook it on the purse handles. Otherwise, I'd never know where they are. See? And you know what I was just thinking? Poor Greg. We're here talking about purses and all this girl stuff. Poor Greg is the only guy who comes to these usually. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't. I just throw stuff in the purse, and then I'm like, I know where that is, and then I lose it. And I drive my family bananas every time. Um... Fran says maybe he has a man purse. Greg, you want to you want to elaborate on that? Do you have a purse? That's what I was just thinking. Some men carry purses. <laughs> it's true. It is true. Uh, Greg says just listening and learning. Um, anybody have anybody want to uh, shout out their website so that we can put it in the resources? If you do, just put it in the chat box, and we'll make sure it gets over there. Um, once it's in the resources, and then it's going to be on our YouTube page, as well as in our members group. So uh, it stays there forever. So that way people 
kind of know who you are and what you do. And of course, that always opens the um, opens the door for people to come visit your site and maybe join your community. It's so important for me that we are able to like connect and grow as, as a big community. Um, anyone have any questions for me before we wrap up today? I do. How are you so smart? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's so embarrassing, Jen. <laughs> Well, you threw me under the bus earlier. You deserve it. I know. I throw you <laughs> under the bus a lot. <laughs> I know. We really, we do that to each other a lot, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, hey, Charlene, I have an idea for you. I'm going to send you a PM here in a minute in, in regards to her submission. Sorry. Good. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. She's got something really good that she's, I think she may have put it in our chat too. The one that between you and I and her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, please send her whatever you have. Cause, um, for those of you who are newer to the calls or who are, uh, just getting started with our community, Charlene Burke is one of the, we have some people who we outsource to in our community and Charlene Burke by a search by Burke is one of our favorite people to outsource to. Um, so if you ever have any questions or need to contact her, just let me know and I'll get you hooked up. All right, friends. So I guess that's it. Um, I will see you guys next week. Charlene is going to be talking to us about your turning PLR into videos, um, walking through the updated software with us so that we have an idea of how to get a grasp on all that good stuff. If you need me between this week and next week, I'm at rachel at usplr.com. You can also tag me in the group. All right, folks. Have a great day. Have a great time doing whatever you're doing for the rest of the week. Um, if you need help meeting your goals, let me know. And if you need anything, let me know. So there you have it. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Bye, Miss Jen.